Methanoic acid and bromine react as in the equation below. A student investigates the rate of this reaction by monitoring the concentration of bromine over time. The student uses a large excess of HCOOH to ensure that the order with respect to HCOOH will be effectively zero. From the experimental results, the student plots the graph below. Part A. Suggests how the concentration of the bromine could have been monitored. To get the marks for this question, we must write this statement. Measure reduction of the colour of bromine. And that's how we're monitoring the concentration of bromine using colour. So this statement gets us the mark for this question. Part B. Suggest a different experimental method that would allow the rate of this reaction to be followed over time. To get the marks for this question, you must say that you're going to measure the volume of carbon dioxide produced. And that's a different experimental method you can use to monitor rate of reaction. Part C. Why would use of excess HCOOH ensure that the order with respect to HCOOH is effectively zero? The reason why we use an excess of HCOOH is because that means that the concentration of HCOOH would be constant and therefore the order with respect to HCOOH would be effectively zero. And this statement will get you the mark. Part D. Using the graph, determine the initial rate of reaction, the rate constant. Your answer must show full working using the graph and the lines below as appropriate. First, we're going to work out initial rate of reaction. We do this plotting a tangent at t equals zero. So using a ruler to plot the tangent at t equals zero, we then need to pick two points and work out the gradient of this tangent. So if we use the point 0.01 and follow it through, it's landing on 220. Then picking the point where it lands at 100 on the x-axis or the time, we follow it up and we've got 0.0058. So working out the gradient, we would do 0.0058 minus 0.001 divided by 220 minus 100 and that equals 4 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per decimeter cubed per second and the reason we've got these units is because we've got moles per decimeter cubed as our numerator units and we're dividing by seconds hence the seconds to the minus 1. Now we're going to try and work out the order with respect to bromine so we do this looking at half-lives. Half-life is the amount of time it takes concentration to decrease by half. So if we look at 0.01 and then divide it by 2, we get 0.005. So if we look at the times for each of these, 0.01 is at t equals 0. And 0.005 is at 190 seconds. Then we need to look at another half-life, so we could use 0.006 and 0.003. 0.006 is at 140 seconds and 0.003 is at 340 seconds. So we've got slightly different half-lives, so we've got a half-life of 200 and a half-life of 190. But because this graph is quite small, we're going to say that we have a constant half-life. So we're going to write this. Half-life is constant, and we would then specify what the half-life is. So we could say that it's 190 seconds. Therefore, if we have a constant half-life, that means the rate of reaction with respect to bromine is first order. So we would then also write this on the lines provided. The reason that a first order reaction has a constant half-life is because a first order reaction is determined exclusively by the rate constant, so therefore half-life will be constant. Now we're going to work out the rate constant. We work out the rate constant using the equation K equals rate divided by the concentration of bromine. 
So we're going to use the initial rate we've worked out is 4 times 10 to the negative 5 and we're going to divide it by the concentration of bromine at t equals 0. The concentration of bromine at t equals 0 was 0 0.01. So that makes our rate constant 4 times 10 to the negative 3. Now we need to work out the units. So we have rate measured in moles per decimeter cubed per second, and we're dividing by concentration of bromine, which is measured in moles per decimeter cubed. That means we can cancel out the moles per decimeter cubed, and that makes our units seconds to the minus 1. For this question, we can use the rate equation because we know it will depend on just bromine, because bromine is first order, or has a first order reaction, and the order with respect to HCOOH is zero order and therefore will not be factored into the rate equation because if anything to the power of zero, well, that's going to equal one. So it'd be one times the concentration of bromine. And so we don't need to include it in the rate equation. Marks in this question were awarded for having a comprehensive conclusion which uses quantitative data from the graph to correctly identify and calculate initial rate and half-lives and reasoned order of Br2 or bromine and determination of K with units. There is a well-developed conclusion showing a line of reasoning which is clear and logically structured. The working for initial rate, half-life and order are clearly shown. Determination of K is clear and correct. This is what the mark scheme says for the awarding of the marks for this question.